Hi, I'm Mark Ramsey. I'm really excited to have with me today Jeff Hassan. Jeff is the founder of a company called Gotta Mobilize and the author of a really interesting new book called The Art of Mobile Persuasion. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks, Mark. Uh, great to talk to you again. I'm so happy to have you with me. Now, Jeff, um, you have uh, been on a deep dive into the world of mobile, and I think it's so interesting that mobile is something we all know is important. Mobile is something is part of all of our lives and the lives of all of our children, and yet still we look at statistics that say almost everybody across every demo listens to the radio, the conventional radio, at least some, even if they don't listen as much as they used to years and years ago. Right. And I really have to ask you the fundamental question. Why should broadcasters in particular care about mobile? Sure. Um, it's it's a fair question. And all these years later, so I, I started in uh, in 2007 with a company called Hip Cricket, and we were primarily working with broadcasters. And I remember hearing from uh, Eileen Woodbury from uh, KISS FM in LA, and she had a very simple uh, idea. She said, why wouldn't I communicate with my listeners the way they communicate with each other? So she had picked up on this concept of this interaction that you're no longer picking up a phone to talk to a DJ or, or to request a song you are texting. And back in 2007, the average age of a texter was 38 years old. And Mark, I can tell you about meeting upon meeting where we had to delicately say to the buyer or the prospective buyer, you're not in the mainstream, but you, what you really want to do is understand who your consumer is, who your listener or, or your viewer is. And we're still at that point now where uh, I, I, I believe in general, but definitely in the broadcast world, there are expectations of listeners and viewers, uh, and I'll, I'll name just a few. So, for instance, if you don't have a mobile website at this point, if you're just rendering your your existing website on a mobile device, you are at at risk of having people flee for the hills, or worse, flee for your competitors. And it's as simple as uh, Amazon um, says that it could lose one point six billion dollars by having a page load one second too slow over the course of a year I mean it is that important and if you think about what needs to be on your mobile website if you're a broadcaster with all due respect if any CFOs are watching this uh, or listening to this which is doubtful but is possible nobody is really looking for a CFO's bio when they're going to your to your uh, your website on a mobile device they want to know simple things like what time is a show gonna air uh, what what is the what is the keyword? What is the short code if you're doing text messaging? How do you join the loyalty club? So you know one of the lessons that we've learned. How over do you the, listen to the station? Exactly, and one of the lessons that we learn is to make life easier for um, your listener, your viewer on their mobile device, uh, and it really has to do with being able to give them what they want in a, a in the the fastest and most efficient path as possible. All right. Well, let me stop you there because you said you you should have a a, a mobile uh, a, a site. Um, right. So what does that mean, though? I mean, if I've got a responsive website, it exists both in desktop form and mobile form. Is that your definition of a mobile site, or no? Uh, it is so responsive is is a technique or it is a, uh, a way to build a website. Uh, it is not the only way to build a website, but basically what you want to do is uh, you want to understand that there's different patterns and different immersions when it comes to what people are looking at on their phone versus on their tablet. So responsive is a very efficient way to make sure that you are rendering properly to a particular device that might be a phablet or one of those those large fat ones. I hate the word phablet, but it actually is going on. Um, versus uh, somebody who is sitting on a tablet and is going to watch your programming, wants to go deeper, wants to go behind the scenes of what uh, of, of what your programming is all about. And so that's entirely different experiences. It, it's not easy. Um, and responsive, you know, people think uh, responsive is the end all. It, it is definitely a good path to take, but there's more exploration, frankly, that needs to happen before you go down well, that And way. also, I'm sure you would agree that, you know, making a crappy, uh, big, bloated website responsive does not solve the fundamental problem in a mobile environment, maybe not even on a desktop environment, right? Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and we'll probably get into this, but just, you know, my fundamental belief is that while broadcast 
uh, is a, uh, a mass medium. You have the ability with your digital channels to make it a personal medium, and you you can take the interests either that people have given you and stated, and maybe in a form or w other ways that you can con you can capture this information. Mm -hmm. um, All right, let's talk about that in a second. But before we sure. get there, I want you to explain to me what's going to happen. Okay. okay, we know how people are embracing mobile devices. We know that the average person uses, I can't remember how many, four or five or six apps for the vast majority of their of their usage time. Um, what's going to happen with behavior? As I said when I open, right now, uh, tons of people are still listening to radio in conventional ways, yep. even if not as long as, as ever. Um, yep. A lot of people are going to Pandora's and Spotify's and other platforms, YouTube and so on, YouTube Music now. Um, right. What's going to happen? Well, I, I think a, a great um, illustration of the, being able to take mobile uh, and broadcast and bringing them together. So I listen to um, two sports radio stations. I live in Seattle. And uh, uh, for right or for wrong, I can't get enough of the Seahawks. And I listen more on an app, uh, actually two different stations, so two, two, two different apps, uh, two different broadcast companies. And I listen to radio that way. So it's streamed live. It's very efficient for me. It's in my hand. It uh, fires up really quickly. I don't have to be in my car. Um, so uh, just the, the very fact of where people are listening and how people are listening, and it is so easy for you to, to download the, for instance, the iHeart app, find a radio station of your liking, and, and get there. But is the listening going to migrate? Is the listening going to migrate? Right now, as you know, what we're seeing is not a lot of growth for conventional radio stations on digital platforms. Right. What we're seeing is a lot of growth for so-called pure plays on digital platforms. So what's happening there and what's going to happen in the future and how much of that listening isn't going radio to radio, but radio to something that isn't traditionally radio? And what yeah. can broadcasters do about it? Well, I, I, you know, I, I've been uh, been known to say that the the killer app is choice, um, and I really believe that. And 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 I think if you look at uh, at the way uh, at the way some some retailers or some advertisers are uh, kind of mandating uh, that someone uh, interacts with them on the on their terms versus the, the consumer's terms is is ridiculous. You know, and I, and I look at. An example is Macy's. So Macy's is one of those great cases where they got into mobile early. Obviously, they have a, a, a sizable budget, but decided that they weren't going to say, uh, only if you have a QR code uh, scanner on your phone are you going to be able to access content in our aisle when you want to look at backstage mm -hmm. pass, uh, for instance. It gives you a variety of ways to interact. You can uh, text in. You can go to a mobile website. You can scan a code. Um, and I, I equate that to it's just like Macy saying, uh, unless you drive a red sedan on Tuesday, you can't come shop in our store. So my wife can shop with the best of them, but she's never downloaded uh, a, a, a QR code scanner. So if all you're doing uh, is providing that one means of interaction with her, you've lost her. So one one uh, one belief that I have for broadcasters is to really take a listen uh, to what the consumers are telling them, but also understand that there are no absolutes when it comes to mobile. And you know, there are people who think that we're gonna the phone's gonna become the the mobile wallet, and cash will be gone by Tuesday. Now, uh, you know, my opinion is that that's laughable. Uh, we not only still have ATMs because people uh, don't want to scan a, a, a check to deposit that way, but we still have tellers because people still want, it's their money. They still want to physically hand it to a human being and get a receipt back. Now, I'm not saying that that's where the world is going, but all I'm saying is that we're not, that, that one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they have this belief that everybody is going to, in a massive way, adopt something on the same timeline. And that's really not the case. So for a, for a sta uh, radio or a television station, it really is, um, it's trite, but it's about understanding your consumer interests, your consumers' uh, likes and dislikes, and, and making decisions accordingly. Okay. But what do you think is going to happen? I mean, do you think, I understand that you're saying it's not absolute. It's not that everyone's going to wake up tomorrow and we're all going to listen to radio, conventional or otherwise, on digital platforms. But as five years go by, ten years go by, what is the mix going to be like in your in your informed view? I mean, how much of my radio consumption is going to be digital uh, via mobile device, through the car via mobile device, whatever, versus over the analog terrestrial radio stations or HD terrestrial radio stations we've listened to for years? 
Right. Um, I, I think we're moving away from the traditional, but we're not moving away from the relationship that a consumer either has or wants to have with a radio station. And I, uh, just because I'm technology savvy like you are and a lot of people, I have access to untold amount of content. But I still go back to what is of interest to me, which is, for instance, this time of year, the Seattle Seahawks. Right? So I'm listening to local radio, even though in the morning there are good options like Jim Rome and, and, and you know, great programming out there. So I think where we're going, and I talked to ESPN for my, uh, for my uh, Art of Mobile Persuasion book, mm -hmm. and it really has to do with, uh, with content plus. Right? So it has to do with the content that is that uh, the decision is made that from, from a mass level, this is going to be of interest to the audience. But you really, that just begins the relationship. And what you have the ability now, which you didn't have the ability to do 5, 10, 20 years ago, was to take that relationship when the, when the, di when the, the volume is down and extend that and personalize that. So I, to, to address your question directly, Mark, I think that radio stations, television stations, have a bright future and they have an opportunity to 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 strengthen these uh, but not in the not in the way that they were doing it before i think the way they were doing it before plus these other ways where you can be as relevant to me as as possible uh, i was telling you a quick story yesterday i was in boston uh... at fenway park and if anybody knows me i grew up a yankee fan from right out of birth and that's the last place that is of interest to me and if uh, if somebody would just blast information to my phone about the Red Sox or the Patriots they really wouldn't understand who I am even though I'm in Boston so there are, there are a lot of factors that go into uh, understanding this audience but I, I have a lot of faith in in the the radio world and you know, the broadcast world in general in terms of uh, you know I, I think we need to ride the winds of tra of change and adapt and in my first book I actually had a slide and we had a, a woman with an umbrella flying across and riding these winds and I, and I think that the smart ones the smart ones uh, you know the folks that that have gotten into it or, or are getting into it now are those that are going to be at this disadvantage and they're what they're able to do is to provide advertising options for their for their prospects, provide more value, and really, you know, stay in the game and succeed in the game. Okay, Jeff, a couple of last questions then, and I'm, I'm pushing you to be as specific as possible because I think people are really trying to understand what to do next in this space, and, you know, any guidance is useful for them. Here's what I'm, here's what I'm getting out of what you're saying, that you should look at, tell me if this is right or not, you, a broadcaster, for example, should look at your mobile platform not simply as a repurpose for your over-the-air signal, but as a means of getting personal and interactive with your audience in ways that are the plus to your over-the-air audio. So in other words, if you look at your app, let's say, as a way to, to provide your stream, let's say, in another distribution channel, let's say, you're looking at the problem far too narrowly. Is that accurate? That, that that's absolutely right uh, because I uh, just like when I was growing up listening to radio stations I have interest in the content long after I have the ability to listen to a radio right I have so now you have other ways to reach me throughout the day primarily through this mobile device which allows me to have even a stronger relationship with the with the, the broadcast okay. station and in a more relevant relationship with the listener than ever before. So let's riff on that. Then uh, give me some specific ideas that a radio station might employ that wants to kind of add that plus to their digital platform. What can they do on the digital platform that brings that plus to life? Well, I, I think uh, you know, when when we talk about personalization, uh, we talk about preferences. And, and I know that there are various ways that uh, a station can gather information on its listeners, everything from having people fill out a form to, uh, to you know to going beyond that in terms of may maybe where they listen and, and that kind of thing. Um, I, so I, I think that what we what we're really after is uh, this this uh, ability to ask a consumer to tell them tell as much or a listener as much as they are willing to tell you and then deliver content. You know, very uh, very good example. Of this is uh, if somebody is a fan of say Britney Spears. Um, and they elect to tell you that you have the ability to reach out to them and not reach out to me, 
with uh, with content uh, about Britney Spears and when she might be in the studio for an interview. I think that that's really this value and this expectation that consumers are asking for. And and we're not looking for meatball sandwich offers if we haven't had a meatball sandwich in in uh, in 20 years, which is my case. Um, so I, I think very specifically, you're asking the question. I think it's um, it's you'd be surprised how willing a consumer, a listener is these days to give you this information. There's actually um, the, this faith in what you need to do is understand that this is a precious relationship and don't spam them and don't hit them with things that they're not inter interested in. But if you ask um, uh, and you can get information, then you have the ability to segment and really reach out to folks in ways uh, that, that will resonate with them. So you're talking about a two-way relationship and not simply a one-way broadcast relationship. Is that right? Absolutely, you know, and that that's everything from that's where the world is going. It's everything from the 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 radio signal to the way that an advertiser on a on a radio station needs to communicate with the listener. Just as important as it is for you to be relevant in your in your programming or in your digital outreach, it's as relevant for your advertisers to understand who they're talking to, and and the smart broadcasters are giving the advertisers. Uh, information and opportunities to reach out to people um, who uh, are more apt to to respond in a positive way. Okay, uh, kind of a last question here. Um, if I'm a station, I'm trying to figure out the difference, or not the difference so much as the value between apps and mobile sites, and then between custom, custom one-station-only apps and multi-station apps, iHearts and TuneIn's and so on. Right. Um, what are my priorities? What should they be? Okay, so uh, we're asked this question all the time, uh, app versus mobile website, and I'll go back to my answer about choice, but you need to do something first, and there are only limited budgets and limited time, so uh, by all means, mobile web comes first. Uh, the expectations of a consumer, they really are voting, If you, uh, like we talked about earlier, if you're not giving them a satisfying mobile web experience, you've lost them. Also, mobile web is a reach strategy or a reach tactic versus an app, which you will find apps not only in broadcast but in retail or for those who are more involved. Mm -hmm. So, for, for instance, for REI, their app users are the ones who are spending more, so they're very important. But it's not your reach, uh, your, your reach play. So I would start with a mobile website, uh, making sure that you're delivering on the with making life easier and giving people information that is suitable for a mobile website. I would definitely look at an app to get your your enthusiasts more engaged and more involved. Um, and I would I would uh, uh, build that way. In terms of your uh, your multiple stations versus your one station. Uh, you, you know, you mentioned earlier about the few apps that people uh, listen to or go to on a regular basis. This is fewer than ten. So, if you're asking somebody to download multiple apps, um, it really depends on what your motive is. If you're, frankly, um, corporate, uh, then you are looking to to bring everybody in under one tent. But if you're a local radio station, um, you're really not looking to to you know open up the the opportunities for people. You're looking to really have a, a captive audience. So I think it really has to depend what your business goals are. Well, it's uh, also a function of the fact that you know to be part of a of a of a of a, of a tune in or an iHeart, you're essentially saying I'm I'm providing my audio only stream to a platform which is all about audio only listenership and it subtracts all that extra plus you were talking about before right. all that extra in, in engagement and integration and back and forth all the added value that can you can get not just through your own app which as you indicate is more of a niche play but right. through a mobile site right right absolutely and and when i was at a hip cricket we used to talk about tribes and the building of tribes with radio stations, and it really is this uh, this intimate relationship that was when I was growing up, and we have the ability now with different channels to be able to, to deliver on that promise. And um, I think that these these tune in tune ins and these iHeart apps are more of this reach where it allows you to listen to you know, a station in Cincinnati if you're in Seattle. But it, it, it's not really that tribe unless you're going to be looking at really creating a corporate tribe. And in most cases, what we're looking to do is we have our own business problems to solve. We need to make our own numbers in our own markets. Um, so I think that that, that, uh, that larger app is really for the corporate folks, but not really on the local level. Okay, Jeff Hassan, 
is the author of The Art of Mobile Persuasion. Jeff, you're supposed to have a copy of the book and you're supposed to hoist it in front of the camera right at this moment. Uh, so just uh, imagine that being done right this second. The Art of Mobile Persuasion. Jeff is the founder of a company called Gotta Mobilize, works with lots of brands and agencies and broadcasters. Jeff, thanks so much for your time today. Absolutely, Mark. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it.